When you think of days gone by, you don't think of driving. You think of motoring, not sports cars, but motor cars. Things with big wings, massive engines, and not much by way of safety gear. Cars were more special back then, an event rather than a diesel-powered chore. And I like the sound of those days, not necessarily the cars. They were ungainly, a bit piggish to drive, and not all that comfortable. Nowadays, there's a trend for taking old cars that have maybe seen their best and updating them, making them more palatable for today's roads. Look at the likes of Icon and Singer. I mean, we're not talking Mr. Toad type cars, but you get my point. I, however, like Morgan's approach, make a new car that looks old. Morgan, when it comes to appearances, is very much stuck in the 30s. Its designers take the whole days of your thing to a new level. Yes, the Aero Coupe is a modern looking thing, but it's still got its basis in yesterday. The Plus 8, a car we love at Xcar, is a breath of old air. It's got a big V8, a decent chassis, and is a hoot to drive, but it's not the most old school version of the car. That's this, the Plus 8 Speedster. Let's go through the checklist, shall we? 1930 style body. Yep, that's here. There's a leather interior, no windscreen or windows to speak of. A leather strap over the bonnet and big old alloy wheels that look like steelies. This is my kind of motor. This is a retro dragster. The reason behind the Plus 8 Speedster is pretty simple. It's a celebration of the century Morgan has been producing cars at its Pickersley Road factory. A century. That is insane. That factory has seen many cars roll through its gates, and the Speedster is its gift to the world. These things are super limited edition. There will only ever be 60, and all 60 have now been produced. But here's the vital statistics. Like the Aero Coupe and the Plus 8, it sits on a bonded aluminium chassis. And like those two cars, under the bonnet, there's a 4.8 litre BMW sourced V8 with 367 horsepower and 370 pound foot. Because it's quite light, well, its performance figures are rather lovely. 0 to 62 takes 4.5 seconds and its top speed is around 150 miles an hour. You have a choice of a six-speed manual or an automatic with a paddle shift, which seems awfully modern for a Morgan, but, you know, horses for courses. And the whole lack of roof thing, well, someone much sillier than I once said, roof off unless the storm has a name. So, um, that. Morgans have a charm about them that no other brand can quite manage. They aren't the sharpest cars to drive, nor are they the most reliably built. They come with rattles and creaks and sundry. But they're hand-built by people who really know their stuff, by craftsmen. Morgans make you smile with their foppish, inoffensive nature. You can't help but like them. My ears are right above a set of rather lovely exhaust pipes that are churning out one of the best noises I've ever heard. <laughs> and the acceleration is something else. Because it weighs so little, this thing will do 0 to 62 in four and a half seconds. And when you lean on it in gear, good God, it just flies. And it flies with that noise. This is an exciting car. This is an experienced car. That's not to say it is without flaws. It's also a chuffing massive car. Yet the passenger cabin is minuscule. There isn't much room for me, and I'm not very big. The seats, however, are wonderful, and they're heated. And considering this is January, and it is very cold, having a warm bottom is rather welcome. Then there's a the steering. The steering is interesting, because 
it works but it's a little bit vague just a little bit it does its job but it's not if you're looking for Porsche levels of steering then you're not going to get that but if you get a Morgan you're not looking for Porsche levels of engagement I mentioned earlier there's two types of gearbox you can get for this I've got the six-speed manual and I'll tell you what it is cracking it's a beautiful gearbox it's a nice short throw it's nice and easy to use it slides into each ratio rather pleasantly something I've always said about Morgans is that they aren't they aren't just cars they are a little bit of automotive theatre everyone stares at you wondering exactly why you're driving something like this in the 21st century especially in January they're not cars for everybody they're not the best handling but they do give some of the best experiences you can have I love these things I really do You know what, I never really care about how a Morgan actually drives. I really don't, because they make me feel good. I like the silliness of them, how dissonant they are compared with literally everything else on the road. This thing will outshine everything short of a Jaguar D-Type. Everything. It, like the rest of Morgan Stable, is a moving stage, and you're the player in a big, mobile show. You're not the star, God no. You're simply the player, the car itself is the true stuff. And I wouldn't have it any other way. The Plus 8 Speedster is the closest you can really get with a modern car to feeling like the gentleman racers of old, albeit with a better engine and better handling. And I like to remember the gentleman racers as having a big smile on their face, the wind in their hair, feeling like the kings of the world, just for a brief moment. And that's exactly how this made me feel. Every Morgan is a letter to the past, but this is a specially written love letter. <laughs>